Good morning, Year One Twos. Uh, welcome to the very last lesson of the Happiness Project. I am so excited by the things that you've been doing. I think you've done so well. Um, I'm really, really proud. Um, so we're going to do our last part of the project today. Um, and uh, it's quite exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. And I think you're going to do really, really well on this. OK, so the whole project, the whole of the Happiness Project has all been about us, hasn't it? And what we're good at and how we're feeling. OK, so we this last part is all about us, too. And it's a little bit more in depth about us. So it's a, you're going to show me through your artwork the things that you really love doing. So before we start, what you're going to need is some paper. Now, I've put A4 paper, which is your normal uh, everyday writing size. I'm doing this on a bigger sheet of paper. I'm doing it on A3. So if you do want to have a go at doing it bigger, um, like me, then please do. That would be amazing. But don't feel like you have to, OK? You'll need some pencils. OK, so I've, I'm going to be using something called a 2H pencil to start with. But if you've got a normal everyday pencil, your HB pencil, um, that would be great. And then if you have got some art, art sketching pencils at home, I'm going to be using a 2B and a 6B. And they're nice and soft lead, which means they're really quite dark and I can smudge them really easily. So if you have those, then get, grab those ones as well. And then lastly, of course, we're going to need some beautiful colour. Now, today I'm going to be using some watercolour paints, OK, because because of what I'm doing with you and what I'm showing you that I'm doing, watercolour paints is exactly the right thing for me. If you don't have those at home, don't worry, you don't need to have watercolour paint. You might have normal paint or you might have some food colouring. That's quite good. You can mix some of that up with water, but make sure you get a grown up to help you with that. OK, um, you might not have any of these things and you might have colouring pencils or chalks or pastels. Whatever you have will be fine and you will be able to do this project with it. So go and grab your colour and the things you need and we can get going. OK. So the first part of our project um, was all about us and how we were feeling. Now, this part, the final part, is we're going to be using that, all the things that we kind of thought about throughout the project, because we're going to do a picture of an eye, OK? Because they say that eyes are a window to the soul. Now, that means that you can see people's emotions in their eyes. You can see by somebody looking at somebody's eye, whether they're sad, whether they're happy, whether they're excited, you can see it in their eyes. So we're going to be quite creative today because whenever you look at an eye, you can see a reflection in it. So you'll see like um, some, some light shining in it. And that's because eyes, they're wet. So they reflect the light. And you can see um, you can see what that person's seeing, okay, or like a shadow of it. So we're going to use that idea today, and we are going to do an eye that is a reflection of ourselves. Now that means it could have something in it that shows what you're like or the things you really love. So here's some examples on on the screen in front of you. We've got this one here. It's got a city in here and then look the forest underneath. This has got a diamond who quite likes treasures and diamonds. This has got a crow in it. Maybe there's a particular animal that you really like. This has got a clock in it with the time. And these next ones, they are some of my artwork. So I did this artwork when we had the very first lockdown last year and it was bright and sunny and colourful and beautiful everywhere. We were so lucky with the weather. My children were in the paddling pool nearly every day <laughs> and they were having so much fun. OK, so I know it was a really tricky time, but because of that sunshine, um, that we were having, even though I was really worried about everything and I felt um, I felt quite worried on the inside. And I know my children did as well. It was also very beautiful weather. Um, 
which that made me feel happy. And then that's what I was trying to hold on to, all those things that made me happy, okay? And that's what I did with these artworks, with these eyes here. So if you look at these ones over here, can you see they, they look a little bit earthy? They're like the greens and the blues in this one, and then you've got the forest in this one. And that's because I really love going out and about into the wild, into woods and forests and going exploring. I absolutely love it. And you should be able to see that. Look, it's got a heart in here. Okay, I really, really love doing that. And then this one here, this one was a reflection of how I was feeling because actually this bit here, so I've got brown eyes, um, which have got gold flecks in them, just like this eye here. And this reflection is actually a reflection of my daughter. And she's looking out the window, um, really missing her friends. So even, can you see beautiful, um, the beautiful sky? And then she's there and she's just really missing her friends and really wanted to go outside. So that's what that was a reflection of. Okay, so I would like you to have a think. So you could either talk to a grown up about this, or you could draw a few little pictures, you know, like when we made notes in the last lesson. So you could either write some words if you fancy it, or you could draw a couple of little pictures or emojis or something like that. Think about what do you really enjoy? Remember, this is the happiness project. And this last one is gonna be a real reflection of what makes us happy. So what do you really enjoy? What do you love to do? What makes you happy? Now, we've done so much work on who you are and the feelings that you're feeling and what makes you special. So this hopefully should be a bit easier now because we've really got a good understanding of who we are now. So have a think, what do you love doing? What makes you smile and laugh? And what makes you happy? Maybe it is you're with your friends. Maybe you're like me and you like going out for adventure walks in forests. Maybe you like the seaside. Maybe you really like football. Maybe your iris in your eye could be a giant football. Um, maybe you love the water. Who loves the water? Okay. So have a think, you might want to pause the video and just jot a few things down now. Okay, I hope you've got lots of really good ideas. Now, Mrs. Hill has told me that you have been doing um, a beautiful book, all about a beautiful book, and it had a giant whale in it. Well, that really, really inspired me with the artwork today. So what I'm going to do, today's lesson um, is a bit longer because I'm doing the artwork with you today and I'm going to show you step by step what you need to do. And it means if you're struggling a little bit and you need to pause it, then that's fine. You pause it and then you can come back to it, okay? So I'm going to show you a little bit of what we're going to do. So here we go. Let me just move this over here for you. We are going to draw an eye step by step, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do these shapes, how to put all of these bits in, how to put the iris in, the pupil in, and then about here, we're gonna just pause for a minute because that's when you get to be creative. And inside the eye, instead of something that looks like this, although look at that, it looks like quite like a flower. Maybe you love flowers, so yours might look quite similar. We're gonna put inside the iris something that you really love to do, something that makes you happy. And then once we've done that, I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna show you how to do the eyelashes and things like that, okay? But we do those eyelashes and that detail at the very, very end. Now, these ones here, I love these ones and I, they really, really inspire me. Can you see how creative you can be with it? So this one here, look, the eyelashes have turned into like a forest and there's birds in the sky, bears on the eye, eyelids. Can you see that? And then this one, um, a bit of a galaxy going on. Now, these two artworks inspired the work that I did with the year three fours and the year five sixes. So what I'm going to do is switch the screen around so that you can see what I'm doing. And then we're going to have a go together. OK. Okay, so I am going to show you step by step. We're gonna draw the eye together. So you can just follow along with me and then we're gonna be really, really imaginative. Now, before we begin, I'm just going to show you 
some ideas from the work that the year five, six and the year three, four was doing. So the year five, six I that I did with them, we use watercolors like you're going to use. And I did like a night sky. Can you see that? And had a little bit of a forest in it, a little bit of a woods and got a little fox down here and a little mole. Okay. And then the year three, fours, I used pastels and um, I did like a, a greeny tone. I put the moon in and we blended it all until we got, had a beautiful eye. Okay, so we're going to be quite creative, just like that, but we're going to do something a bit different because what the, the text that I was told you were using really, really inspired me. Um, and it made me think about some of the things that I love. And of course, you all know that I really love art. <laughs> but what I really love doing recently is um, doing some sea creatures. So I'm going to work that into my eye because actually when I watch sea creatures, it makes me feel really, really happy. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So in front of you, you should have your paper and you should have your pencil. I've got my 2H pencil here. Okay, um, but you might have a HB and that is perfect. Okay, because that means the lead's a little bit harder, which means that when we're doing the lines, it's a little bit lighter. Now I'm going to be pressing harder so that you can see the lines I'm drawing. But if you do it nice and lightly to begin with, so you're just sketching nice light lines first, and then you can make it a bit darker as we go along. So the first line you're gonna do is a nice big curvy line. Okay, like that, can you see that? All right, so do your nice big curvy line and try and fill your paper up. Can you see I've got it nearly all the way to the edge, both sides. And then what we're going to do is the corner of the eye. Now to do that, I'm just going to put a little circle there, really, really light. I bet you can't even see that. Just so I know that I want to go around that circle. Can you see? So it tucks in first and then it comes out and we're going to do another curvy line all the way at the bottom, joining up with the other one. So it looks a bit like a lemon. Can you see that? Little bit like a lemon. All right, now the next step is you've got a eyelid line above it. So I'm just going to do that eyelid line. There we go, above it. So can you see it doesn't join on, it's just another line above. And then we need an eyelid line on the inside too. So I'm gonna do an eyelid line on the inside too, and it just joins up. Can you see that there? Just joins up. Perfect. Now remember, if I'm going a bit quick, pause the video and you can do it each bit at a time, okay? So every time I do something, you can pause it and you can do the next bit. Now, the iris in the middle, what lots of people do is they just draw a circle and then they always wonder why it looks a bit odd. And that's because when you actually look at somebody's eye, you don't actually see the full circle. Now you could check this yourself by going to have a look in the mirror and look at your own eye. And I bet you don't see the full circle. I bet the top and the bottom bit you don't see. And that's because it's hidden behind your eyelids. Um, if you haven't got a mirror next to you, maybe you've got a grown-up and you can look at their eyes and do it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw that circle. You can do it with your finger first. I'm going to take my, my pencil away and I'm going to do it with my finger and imagine a great big circle. And look, can you see it goes over my eyelids? That's kind of how big I want to do it. So now I'm going to get my pencil and I'm not going to draw the lines up here though because that, they're hiding. They're hiding behind the eyelid. So I'm going to draw my first curvy line that side. And then I'm going to draw another curvy line this side. <gasps> really, really big eyeball. Okay. Now the next part is the pupil in the middle. Now I'm going to do this nice and lightly first. So that's just doing a circle in the middle. Because some of this is going to be a reflection. So what I'm going to do is draw in my reflection. Now that is the flash of light. If you look in somebody's eye, you will see a flash of light. So there's my reflection there. That's my flash of light. Now, 
just like the year 561. Let me show you this. Most of the time you might see a triangle shape. Okay, it looks a bit like a pizza slice. So you might want to do your pizza slice or you might, depending on what you're going to do inside your eye, I've done this special kind of shape and you'll understand why in a minute. So now I've done that, I can make this line a bit darker. Okay, I'm gonna make this line just a bit darker there. Okay, oh my goodness, look at that. I've got an entire eye. Now, before I move on to the next bit, I am going to draw in the tear duct there. You see that line there? And the tear duct often has, because that's wet as well, it's often got its own pizza slice in it as well, its own reflection. Okay, now, like I said, the work that you're doing on your book really, really inspired me. So today, my eye is going to show a whale. So I'm just going to now draw my whale shape into the eye. Now, can you see what I'm doing? It's just like a big fish shape. You see that? Okay. So if you wanted to do something similar, I'm gonna rub out that line layer a little bit just so that you can see my whale, whale shape just a bit clearer. There we go. So it's a curvy line like that and a curvy line like that because I wanted it wrapping around my pupil. And then I'm gonna put his tail on and I'm gonna get that to wrap around the pupil as well. Can you see that? And then the other tail bit on, oh, there we go, oh, look at that. And then I'm gonna put the fins on, there we go. Ooh. And then I'm gonna put the other one on as well. There we go, can you see that there? Can you see how it's starting to shape up? And it doesn't have to be a whale you could do, you could do a jellyfish. So your eyeball could be a jellyfish and it can have all the squiggly, wiggly lines down here. And this could be the jellyfish's top part. It could just be a fish. It might be something completely different because remember this is supposed to, um, this eye is supposed to show what you really love. So for these ones, I did a night sky and I did some trees in it because I love nature and the little animals. Um, and the same with this one, but I did a nice green background, okay? So you can choose what you want to do. If what I'm doing right now isn't something you want to try and you want to do it different, you can always go back when the video's finished, go back to my PowerPoint and have a look at some of those pictures on it. All right, so I've got my whale, I'm gonna put his mouth in there there we go um and then his eyes about there so i'm just going to do his eye there there we go all right now if you've got these special kind of pencils what you can do is put a little bit of shading in now so i'm going to use the 2b because i want to darken up some of my lines now so i'm going to go over my lines with the darker pencil can you see can you see the difference? So I'm just gonna go over and darken that line up a little bit. All right. There we go. And then I'm gonna do the same with my other lines. I'm gonna darken these up a little bit. Now this outside line, that's where all the eyelashes are gonna go. So that's a good one to get nice and dark. And let's do the inside line. There we go. And then around the iris. And then the pupil, because the pupil in the middle, that is gonna be all black, but I'm not gonna do that right until the end. Okay, now can you see, I've not gone into my whale for that. I've just done the bit that's around the edge. All right, and then what you can do, whatever you've drawn on the inside, whether you've done one like me, or you've done your own one, you can just go over that as well and make that stand out. Because the first part, that light sketching, is just for getting all the shapes in the right place. And then once everything's in the right place, we can go around the edge 
okay and just darken it up a little bit and then that means any light lines on the inside if you want to rub those out anything didn't quite go in the right space but be careful because if you're using normal paper see my paper's a bit thicker here if you're using normal paper and you rub it too much then it can it can get a hole, hole in it and we don't want that do we so I'm going to join that reflection line up. See, so it still does look a bit like a pizza slice. Okay, there we go. Can you see that? Now I am ready for the next part. Um, if you wanted to, you can do a little bit of shading. So with eyes, I've now got my really soft 6B now and I'm going to use the side of my pencil. Um, because eyes are curved, they're a curved shape. The inside corners and the edges are usually, particularly this top edge, because you've got the eyelashes that go up there, are usually shaded. So what you can do is just very lightly with the side of your pencil, you can shade that bit in. You might want to do this if you're using pastels or paint, you might want to do it with the actual paint. Okay, but I'm just going to do it with the pencil just to show you what you would do. So I'm just shading those edges. Can you see there? And then that's what makes it. It's the shading that makes something look real. It makes it look 3D rather than flat. Okay, and then this part, um, the tear duct, that is also, I'm also going to shade that bit because that bit's usually quite dark as well. Apart from, can you see, I'm not shading that pizza slice reflection that I did. Okay, because I want it to look realistic. And then what you can do, if you're using your pencil, you can just use your finger. You'll get a bit mucky with this. <laughs> and you can just shade, uh, blend it in, blend in that shading. Okay, so I just wanted a nice light, shaded bit so that's all ready to go now now if you're not quite caught up with me then pause the video before you move on to the next bit the next part we're going to start adding the color now like i said because i'm i'm going to be using watercolors now the first part is the first layer is going to be all this background color now the only bit that i really need to make sure i'm not getting the color on I don't want to get it on this bit because that needs to stay white and I don't want to get it on the reflection and I need to try and keep the colour inside the eye. So what we're really looking at is this whole circle bit apart from the reflection. So what I'm going to do is I've got two blues. I'm going to start with one blue. I'm going to start with the lightest blue and I'm just going to give it a nice wash of colour, just a wash of colour. There we go. Now remember, can you see, look, I'm not rubbing the paint. I'm just gently stroking it. And I'm going to give it a nice wash all over. I'm going to cover my whale up all the way to the edge. Look, I'm being super careful at the edges. Can you see that? Super, super careful. Because I don't want to go into the white bit. So super, super careful. But I'm going to go over all the rest. All the rest of it, get a bit more colour. Uh, there we go. Can you see that? Now, you may have noticed, can you see this tape along the edge? Because paper can go a bit wobbly and a bit bumpy when you make it wet, I've taped mine down so that it stays nice and flat. Now, I've used masking tape because it's not as sticky as sellotape because I don't want to rip my paper at the end. Okay, so there we go. I've done my um, cover of colour in that colour. Now I'm going to get my other blue because when you think about the ocean, it's not just one blue, is it? So now I'm going to get my darker blue. It's lots of different tones of blue. And if the light's shining on it, there might be white flecks or gold flecks or yellow flecks because the ocean reflects just like the eyeball reflects. Okay, so I'm gonna do all, let's see, I'm doing the edges because often the edge has got a nice dark part to it, which if you go and check your eye, you might be able to see that. 
The darker your eyes are, the trickier it is to see. So my eyes are very, very dark. Otherwise I'd show you my eye, but you wouldn't really be able to see it. So anybody with lighter eyes, you can see the, the detail in your eye a lot clearer. So I've done all the edge. And then what I wanna do is I just wanna pull some of that color in towards the center. Can you see that? I'm just pulling it in towards the center. And I'm going right over my whale, going all the way into the middle. So imagine there's like a dot in the middle and you're pulling that color into the center. Okay. And then you can do kind of little dots and dashes and just get a little bit of texture. Now, if you're using watery colors like me, so that might be watercolors, that might be food coloring, that might be some watered down paint. Um, so it's nice and washy like this. You might just be using ordinary paint and that's absolutely fine too. But what, because it's all layers, lots and lots of different layers, we're gonna need to dry those layers in between, okay? Now you can either just leave it to dry, okay? And watercolors, they don't take very long to dry. Or a good trick is to use a hair dryer. So now I've got that first layer of color. What I'll do, I'm going to dry it with the hair dryer, okay? So I'm going to stop it for a moment um, so that you don't hear all the noisy, noisy hair dryer, okay? There we go. My eye is now completely dry. So if you, if yours is still wet, pause the video and either let it dry or see if there's a grown up that can pop a hair dryer on it to help it dry. Or if you're using pastels, you won't need to wait for it to dry at all, will you? So the next part, now that that's nice and dry, I'm going to do the next layer. Now, the next layer that I want to do is I want to do the whale, okay? Now, I'm going to use the blues again, and I might use a little bit, just a little bit of the black. Okay, so I'm going to use a thinner paintbrush now. So I used this big, thick one before. I'm going to use a thinner paintbrush, and I don't want it quite as wet as the big one was, okay? Because I want the colour to be stronger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that nice strong colour and there you go, can you see that? Look at that! So it's not so watery and I'm going to pop the colour onto my whale. There we go. And I just want to get all the colour on first, that's all I want to do. And can you see I've started at the edge and then I'm blending that colour in. I want a tiny bit of water on there and I'm going to get some more of that same colour and I want to do the underneath bit too. So look, I'm doing the edge of it first and then I'm going to pull that colour in. Okay. I want it lighter down the centre. You'll see, this, you'll see why in a minute. So let's do this other bit here. So all along the edge. There we go. And then pull that colour in. There we go. And do the fin. And I want to join that up with this colour. So remember, if it starts getting a bit scratchy, just rinse your paintbrush. Just have water on it and then just use the water to blend the colours. There we go. Can you see that? Just the water. That's all I've got on my paintbrush. And I'm just making the colours blend nicely together. Okay. And then a bit more colour now and I can do the other one. This one's underneath so it's going to be shadowy which means it's going to be a bit darker. There we go. Now I'm doing the end fins. And I'm do can you see I'm doing it the same way each time. I'm doing putting all the strong dark colour on the edge. And then um, I'm just blending that into the middle. 
Can you see that there? Here we go. That's my first layer of colour. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to dry it again. So once you've done your first layer of colour on whatever it is that you're doing on yours, then you need to pause this video and dry it off again. Okay, look at that, it's nice and dry now. So I'm ready for the next layer of colour. So I'm going to use my medium sized paintbrush again, and I don't want too much water on it again. And this time I'm going to use my other blue. Okay, so this is my darker blue. Now, underneath, if the light, if the sunshine is at the top and shining down into the water, that means the underneath bit is going to be the shadowy bit. So that's where I'm going to use my dark blue is I'm going to use that to create that shadowy bit. Can you see there? Here we go. And I want that, this underneath fin, that's gonna be quite shadowy. And the tip of this is gonna be a bit shadowy. And then along the bottom over here, is going to be quite shadowy too. Now can you see I've not dipped it in the water yet because I want to keep this quite dry at the moment. Okay because I can always then add water like I did before um, to, to help it to blend. So I want a little bit over here as well. And then a bit more on the other side. So can you see there how I've got my two different blues? I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush. Now I don't want it too wet, so I'm gonna squeeze off some of the water. I just want it a little bit wet, but it's got no color on it now. I just want it a little bit wet, just so that I can blend the darker blue with the lighter blue. And the great thing about watercolors or just watery colors, so like I said, if you're using food coloring or just watery paints, is that if you add a bit of water, then Actually, the water does the job for you. It does loads for you. Okay, there you go. Can you see that there? Now, while that bit's drying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this same paintbrush. And because I've already wet my darker color, I want to make the edge of my eye just a little bit darker as well. So I'm just going to add a bit of detail. So can you see that nice, strong, dark color? I just want to put that along the edge too. So while parts of your, your picture are drying, you could be doing some other parts. Just make sure you're not leaning on it so you don't smudge it because you don't want to smudge it. So remember, you can pause this video at any point if it's a bit tricky to follow as quickly as I'm doing it. Then you can pause the video and just do the bit that you're working on and then start it up again. You might because this has got lots of layers, you might want to start it and then finish it the next day. Okay, as long as you do come back and finish it though. So I'm just going to add in some of these details that I told you about, these lines coming in. Just want to make some of them a little bit darker. So I'm making it a bit more watery now. Just add in a little bit of texture. Okay, so you just keep building it up, building up the layers. I need to be careful over here because I don't want to go into my whale. some of this darker colour down here as well. And like we were doing before, just pulling it in towards the middle. It just adds a little bit of texture. There we go. So once I finish this bit, and once you've finished doing this layer, 
then you will need to pause the video and dry it off. And so there you go, that is nice and dry for me now. Okay, so I'm ready for the next part. So this time I'm going to get my thin paintbrush, my smaller one, okay? Um, because now I, I don't want it too wet again, but I'm going to use my black now. And this is just to start getting some details in. So like the mouth, okay, and the eye. And I'm gonna get some kind of bobbly on it as well because the whales, they can have some bobbles and then we get some lines. I wanna get some lines going on because you can often see those creases, those lines on the whale's tummy. Okay. And then going to do the lines for the fins. Now what you can do, if you're a bit nervous about doing this with a paintbrush, then what you can do is once everything's dry, you can actually, you could use a felt tip, special kind of pen. I've got these pens over here, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, which are watercolor pens, and they are fantastic for doing little details in. Okay. Um, and then what you're, you're doing really is just kind of getting some of the outline defined. and just putting some of the texture in and some bit more on those shadowy bits like underneath its belly. Can you see that's where I'm putting these darker lines, this darker bit here is under its tummy because that's where it's all shadowy. Okay, and then you can put, I was watching the snail and the whale the other day. So I might put some dotty bits on its tail just like in the snail and the whale when they go on all their adventures. So I'm going to pop it, pop those dotty bits on there. Okay, there you go. Oh my goodness, look at my whale, I'm so excited. Now, when you've done all the black bits on that, what you can do is then if you get, I'm gonna make my black a little bit more watery now because all of this inside middle bit, that all needs to be black. So I'm going to, Go around the edge, because that's the bit you've got to be really careful with. You don't want to go over the, the edge of the circle. Okay, so I'm doing all the edge bit. There we go. What I often do is turn the paper round as I'm doing it to make it a bit easier for my hands to get little details but because I've taped it down for you to see clearer today I can't do that today but you can you can move that paper around to help you because it can be quite tricky keeping a making sure that your hands not wobbly when you're doing this part Okay, so then once you've done all the edges, it's a bit quicker and a bit easier then to fill in the middle part. And you want to keep the black, you don't want it all wishy-washy, it needs to be quite dark. So you need to keep the colour quite thick. Okay, and just fill it all in. There we go, so you've got a nice thick covering. <gasps> Look at that! Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go along the edge with the black here as well to really make the eye stand out. Now be careful, look at that, see? You can lean on it really easily. So this is where you might want to turn your paper around or you might just want to dry the middle part of your eye before doing this so that you don't lean on it or smudge it. 
Okay. Here we go. And then I'm going to do the edge the other side. Now, the next part of our eye, because remember, we're leaving this, this bit here, this needs to stay white. So what you can do for the next part is add some white highlights. I'm just going to do the dark along the top here, because remember I said at the beginning, and it gets a bit shadowy up there, because that's where the eyelashes are. So um, then what you can do is just add in little details um, to your eye. I'm going to put just because it looks a bit odd without it, I'm going to put a little bit of a black down here as well, just so that it looks the same all across. Now, because this is underwater, what I'd love to do next are some splashes, but just some gentle splashes with the white so it looks like bubbles in the water. Okay, so if you need to pause your video now, get this layer dry, and then we'll do the next bit. Okay. The next part is I'm going to get my middle size paintbrush, make sure it's nice and clean, and I'm going to put it on my white and make sure it's nice and watery. Can you see there? Really nice and watery. And then what I'm going to do, so you might want to make sure that you've got an apron on for this, or just make sure um, that you've got nothing around, because you might splash it a little bit. But I'm going to do this quite gently, because I just want some gentle splashes bubbles on my whale underwater. You see those gentle splashes? Now, because this is watercolor, it, um, it washes off really, really easily. So just make sure whatever you're using, make sure you cover anything up if it doesn't wash off easily like this one. And you might need a grown-up's help for this. Okay, so I've done all my splashes. Now what I'm going to do, because mine is just watercolour, I've splashed outside the eye, which doesn't matter too much, but I am going to give it just a bit of a wipe and wipe away those splashes um, so that all my splashes are inside of my eye. Okay, because I want those water bubbles to all be on the inside, like that. So what you can do then is you can dry it off again. Because remember, we are doing it in layers. Now, the next part is the final part. It is the lashes. So I'm going to show you in pencil first. I'm going to use my 2B. So you might want to just use your HB for this, your normal, ordinary pencil. Now, lashes, what you need to do to make them look real, so they're not just straight lines, you've got to do a curve and a flick. So it's a bit like... Um, doing a tick, okay, but just not as pointy here. It's got to be curved like this, so it's curving it. All right, so it's a bit like doing your curly curve, but the wrong way. <laughs> okay, so we're curving it, and I'm just going to do a few to show you all the way along. Now, these ones this side, can you see they're quite a bit, they're quite long, and the further along you go, once you get to about here, they start getting a bit shorter. Now, once you get to here as well, they'll need to start going in the other direction. Can you see that? So this side, they're going that way, and then this side, they come in the other way. There you go. So there's all my first eyelashes, and then you do the same on the bottom. Curve, curve. And the eyelashes, for them to look real, they need to start in different places, they need to crisscross a little bit. They need to go in different directions. So with the bottom eyelashes, I'm using this line here as a place for where to put, to make the eyelashes start. So again, when I get to here, the eyelashes need to go in the opposite direction. And as they get closer to the corner, the eyelashes get shorter and shorter and shorter. Can you see that? So now I've done a few in um, the pencil. What you can do for this bit is you can either use a pen um, or you can use your paints. Now I'm using these which are my special watercolour pens and they've got a brush. This is a brush at the end so that's why I'm using these ones. Now the first thing I want to do is I'm actually going to go over this eyelid line first. Okay. Because 
uh, that is underneath. And remember, we talked about doing this in layers. So you always do the underneath layer first. OK, and then what you can do is you can go over the edge of your eye as well. Now remember, make sure that you have dried your middle part of your eye because you really don't want to spoil it now. You don't want to spoil it by smudging it. Just either leave it to dry and come back and do it. Or if you've got a grown up, they could help you to dry it. So I'm going to come to the other side. I'm going to do the bottom lines now. There we go. And then let's do that inside line as well. There we go. Okay, so you can add and darken up certain bits of it as well. All right, and then what we're going to do is we are going to go over those lashes and actually add a few more as well. Because you have got, if you look at your eye, you've got lots and lots of eyelashes. They can be really, really thick. So we need to make sure we're putting lots and lots, but just make sure you're doing them nice and curvy so that they look real. There you go, can you see? So nice curvy eyelashes and then they should really start shaping up and looking like an eye like a reflection of you I really can't wait to see these and see what makes you guys really really happy so stories are a really big thing for what makes me really happy and that's why when I was told about the book you was doing and the sea, um, sea creatures, the whale, it really inspired me because I thought, you know, I love that. I love that too. And I love books like The Snail in the Whale too. And I just thought, oh, that would look beautiful in the eye and it will show a part of what I love because I love going to the beach. Who else loves going to the beach and the seaside? It's such good fun. There we go. So I'm just going along the bottom lashes, finishing it off. Now I'm doing this quite quickly. If you need to pause the video and do it, that is absolutely fine. And then what you can do is once you've kind of done all of this, you can have a look at your eye and you can think, oh, well, what else could I add in? Is there anything else I could add? Okay, so you could add little details to here if you like. Um, or actually, you might get to this point and think, Do you know, I'm really, really happy with this. So you might want to leave it there. So there we go. That is my under the water eye, my whale eye. Um, and that was inspired by your amazing book that you've been doing. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And um, I can't wait to see yours. So what I'm going to do is just flip my screen around so that you can see me. Hello. So I really, really hope you enjoyed that. Um, and I can't wait to see your reflections because that's why we're doing this eye. Remember, this is bringing it all together. Now, what you can do, if um, you can either keep all three of your happiness project artworks, so you can have three separate pieces, or you can make a collage out of them. So the first piece that we did can be the background and then you can cut out your heart and you can put that on top and then you can cut out your eye and put that on top as well and make a collage of it and put all three pieces together. Or you can just keep them as three separate pieces to have up on the wall. But either way, make sure you take a picture and you share it because I can't wait to see. Well, I hope you've enjoyed The Happiness Project and I look forward to seeing you next week when we're starting something new. Okay, well, take care. See you. Bye.